What's up dudes, dudettes, and anybody who doesn't identify as either? This is Edmund Sun covering for Wilt for this week's podcast. Uh, today we have Blush. Hello. Did your voice just crack? Yes it did. Was <laughs> just, just, just trying not to piss a certain someone off with a shoulder injury and all. We have Mercury. I regret everything in my life. We have Melodic Cudgel. Hello. And Roman. It's the GB Roman, thank you very much. It is a tiny, tiny oh. Roman. Small. It is, the, it is the best Roman. It is the small Roman. SML. It's the best. <laughs> the anyway. one that's actually alive. <laughs> <sighs> Technically, it's non canon, so you're still not alive. I don't care, it's count for me. It's, pro it's probably so somewhere it's somewhere inside, inside the giant. So, didn't you die to a lava floor? Nope, still alive. So this week we're gonna—it's an open week. We're gonna be talking about uh, the recent World of Remnant as well as certain things on the series as of this moment. So I want to go through really quickly, brief thoughts on just number one the the backstory. Now that we finally understand the entirety of the Great War, because I have a whole bunch of I, theories with it. I could kind of barely hear what you were saying there, dude. Oh, is my mic too loud? Good. Well, everybody was talking at the same time, so I couldn't hear you. Oh, okay. I was saying, uh, basically, we're going to be discussing uh, the World of Remnant this particular episode, as well as the series as a whole, and then uh, I have a lot of theories. But my first question, I suppose, is um, how did you guys feel about kind of the, the interesting divide that they, that they started off with every kind of nation, and how they eventually just kind of collapsed on each other? Uh, well, I should start with you. Uh, apparently, everything is Mistral's fault. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... I, I just watched the episode of minutes ago, so... It, it just seemed like, hmm, it seems we have all the best settlements, Lan. Okay, now let's... Now let's see what we can make out of these... Con out of... <laughs> out of these dictated or up here. <laughs> I think these done. are actually really small guys. I like the cut of their chin. Oh, dude. Okay, they just... <laughs> Jeez. Merc? Um, I see it as a really uber-aggressive game of Civilization V. Um... <laughs> We're just playing Risk. Obviously, Mantle yeah. is not going for a culture victory. Um, they're going for science. Bale is just doing their own thing. Yeah. And I believe that, uh... Mistral was just trying to go for the tip, and they failed, failed miserably. Cudgel? Yeah, um... Is it just me, or did Mistral's Emperor look like Ming the Merciless? I still... My physics professor always referenced that. I still don't know what he actually looks like. Oh, I'm guessing very stereotypically Asian from what it looked like. Let's, back, let's be real. Oh it looked God. like it. That's Ming. Scumbag, evil knife behind the back of evil Asian type of guy. Like, yeah, <laughs> yes, good. <laughs> like ninety percent of like those kung fu movies. Uh, yeah. Is that <laughs> racist? I feel like that might be a little bit racist. I'm Japanese, yeah. so I don't feel offended. Anyone who's cause... played the Dynasty Warriors games, uh, you know that first villain you always have to face with that really annoying voice. Oh wait, Dynasty Warriors. Never mind. Um. Basically that, and also maybe a combination of that one uh, skinny guy who was always trying to kidnap Toph. Are you talking about the, Are you talking about the uh, the yellow turban guy? Yes. Yeah, I know him. He's annoying. He can go die. Uh, he like died. Of, from the <laughs> he died of a he died it's, of an exploded year, it's, it's of an exploded bat, bladder. So. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, I'm sorry. Did you say he died of an exploding bladder? Yeah, he was trapped in that cage, and he had to pee, and that's all we saw of him ever after. No how, one got them out. How do you... How do you... You know what? Whatever. Anyway, <laughs> Roman Thomas... bladder exploded. Don't, don't you know what an exploding bladder is? I, I've never heard of that, no. We went, from, know we went from talking about an episode to exploding bladder. This how is that different from any great. of the other podcasts that I cover? Only the most professional talks here at Ruby Nation. The most, yeah. the most, the most intellectual. 
very, very serious business talk. Business, extremely, ser uh, extremely serious topics. Oh, by the way, so bladders can explode. Let's go. How do we spin that into marketing? Yeah, pretty much. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know you love it. Debatable. That's Especially that's that's an interesting this morning. Thing. That's extremely debatable. Oh, fully. Why does this happen every time I get into a Skype go. call? <laughs> Why are we not having like a issue? Because we do that from time to time. Anyway, so uh, moving on into the episode, I'm extreme. Wait, Roman, did you say actually? Did you actually specify what what, what you thought? Because I I was. Uh, dealing with Skype all I, I only have one response to it, and it's just a picture of. Uh, it's just a picture of that one Sonic comics of uh, the robot patting a sign to the ground saying, no fun allowed. That's pretty much my summary. <laughs> That's pretty accurate, actually. <laughs> so that actually leads me to my next point. So we know we know that Grim are, or rather Grim attacks are directly correlated to, I guess, would it be classified as negative emotions? That's what I perceive it as. So it's... I, thought that, I thought that was an established thing, wasn't it? It should be, yeah. It was in the Grim world of Remnant. Then, yeah, hey, I thought, I thought that was kind of a stab. I thought that was kind of established by now. Yeah, yeah because they done. always go to like. Just think about it. They kept feeding off all the sadness and panic in Volume Three during the matches, and then Crow explained with the bandits roving around that causes chaos, then causes Grim to show up. So they are Basically, attracted. Basically, whenever to someone it. feels grim, guess what appears? <laughs> it's like the cool. It's Did like you just make really a pun? It's like the really bad. No, like I'm fairly certain I, I found out where the name came from. It's like the really evil version of the Kool Aid Man. Oh my god! I'm just, I'm just imagining. Man, this is the worst day of my life. <laughs> I don't think it's gonna get any worse. <laughs> yes. Oh yeah! Yes, <laughs> that'd be amazing. <laughs> all right, all right, we need it. Fans, fans, fan fans, submit, submit your fan art of of a grim Kool Aid Man just busting through a window. <laughs> I guess that gives <laughs> new definition. I would say something to describe it, but it'd be perceived as racist, so I don't want to say anything. And a boy, what's up, <laughs> cuddle? <laughs> oh man, that that I want to if it, if somebody actually does that, link that to me immediately. <laughs> Just private message. Right. Make, make, yes. sure, make sure you send it to the care. inbox. Right now. We'll, we okay. will definitely share that. How I love it. <laughs> so that actually, um, uh, right words. So, an uh, extremely interesting thing for me uh, that I thought was, I don't want to say dumb, but it was pretty dumb. Uh, I've seen some the, dumb things in my life, so. I've done some dumb things in my life, but the, um, the, hey guys, we're going to need you to stop doing what makes you you, because if we can keep everything in check instead of the negative emotions, that'll solve the problem. Thoughts yeah, on that? <laughs> Because that always works. You know, I kind of I thought that the whole thing about uh, Mantle and Atlas was, oh, we live in such a cold area that the Grim can't attack. Now we find out the Grim attack anyway. Yeah. <laughs> it's like it's like, haha, I can't get up here. Hold my beer. <laughs> I'm just I'm just imagining that it was pretty much just like um, just just like in in current times, it's the fact that nobody nobody wants to fight Russia. It's like, oh, we can't get him. Mm. It's the it's the joke that people keep consistently making that it's literally just a just this this cold area of just a whole okay. pile of no, just all of the nope. So the fact that they literally the... oh go ahead go ahead. From... Oh. I was just gonna say something funny. That's all I was gonna do. <laughs> go for it. I have something funny. It. It's just it, it's like if I, it's like in fact it's so full of nope that the that the word nope is stapled onto the place as it is. <laughs> Smack it with a stapler with a dude. Or I can just imagine like a like a sign just pounded into the ground. It's like this is yeah. the area of nope. Uh, what were you say, Cudgel? And it and it will be right next to the one that says no fun, so Yes. <laughs> the Mandatory one problem fun. I have with this is that um it won't allow fellow edgy artists to truly express themselves and to release music that truly speaks to me on an emotional and personal level. And your that first would problem happen. is that you have emotions. 
He has emotions. Emotions from the kingdom. Welcome back. Like when I had anger earlier, that's why for his stupid crap. Yeah. Okay, here's the thing. They know that negative emotions attract the grim, which means that there must be some way to quantify and measure negative emotions. So why don't they develop the technology to uh, detect negative emotions and then find a way to jam it? This is it. This is the world of Revenant, not I'm breaking just, emotions. Don't I'm just imagining just shit. like a guy who's like really sad, like he just got laid off, like his 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 wife, or he found out that his wife is leaving him, and just everything, and just like the, there's a guy who's just at a computer, just monitoring the entirety of the of the nation, and he's just User like, left your channel. oh shit. Oh, we gotta go. Like, wait, no, that guy's really sad. We need to get the, we're like, we need to get him a box of kittens stat. It's like that, like the commercial, like, like the commercial the geeks watch. <laughs> That's a complete opposite direction of where I thought it was going. Like, the person that the monitor sees this, he goes, oh, he's having the worst day of his life. He cuts back to the guy, man, this is the worst day of my life. Uh, town cards come in and just start beating the crap out of him to kill him. Like, nope, can't have you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I feel even worse. Stop it! They're gonna come back and beat the crap out of you again. <laughs> Only you, mantle. Just don't feel bad. Stop feeling bad. I cannot feel bad. You have to. You can't stop that. <laughs> just beat them hard enough until they can't feel anything anymore. It is beat, the, beat, it. Him, beat him so hard until he stops feeling anything. Exactly. Quote from Mercury. <laughs> if, if you think about it, there was hints that. If someone's really badly depressed, they toss them off a roof. So they'll do the same. Yeah, it's fair. Take the saddest guy and take the saddest guy in the village. Just shove him off. I'll shove him off a building. That'll work. <laughs> no, you oh, say you want to go and do a nice peaceful walk in the woods, and then you just stab him in the back. Oh dear God! <laughs> Cover them up, this up saying no one will miss them. So <laughs> just part of kick him off the mountain. Head. Pull. Oh my god. No, they're in the farthest reaches of the north with the coldest parts of the ocean ever. If they wanted to seclude uh, everyone from people like that, they could literally just shove them off the cliff, have them become a and popsicle in the water, and hope that he carries the Grim with him. I think it'd be, I think it'd be pretty interesting if they, if, if they just said, like, the, the guy who's just standing up on top of the roof, Roman, and he's, like, kicking him off, or he's kicking him off the roof, and he just says, This is Ruby! Bah! And just kicks him off. <laughs> And the guy's like, the crap is a ruby. <laughs> the hell's a ruby? Don't worry about it. Pa! <laughs> it's a ruby, dude. Son, I actually got a serious point to make. Shut up, take the context. <laughs> so, we both, we also saw the Atlas World of Remnant way before, and we know that it's more go. Well, that's your problem at this point, so screw you. <laughs> so, we know that it's more government and military run more than anything. Yeah. So, I think they started the uh, banning of arts and all of that was to stop government criticism. Because that's what I honestly, as, that's what I think is what caused it. Let me think about it. If you're overrun by military and government control, when you want to find some way to speak out against it, and you would do it through art, or any other type of art, like literature, all that jazz, and then you get forbidden from it as well. So... That's probably why they started banning it in the first place. Yeah, obviously, if if you have if the easiest way to uh, the easiest way to silence uh, a riot, so to speak, or something of that nature is, or to anybody who would speak out against you, is obviously through the use of uh, limiting music and stuff like that. So, yeah, I, I agree, Mark. I think it's an interesting point. Anybody else have thoughts on that? And then the future version of Mantle Atlas spawned people like Neon Cat and Flint. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. I, think so, I didn't think about that actually. <laughs> so we we'll think next Neon Cat honestly is like an asexual reproduction thing. Wait, what? Wait, what? Asexual reproduction? Yeah. What? What are? What are like what? Yeah, Neon, Neon just Cat splits off into new Neon Cats. Neon, Neon just kind of buds. Reproduces Doesn't by flooding. Like hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Doesn't Lynch already do this? Okay, I heard something about pop tarts. I heard the show, and then Cudgel was talking. No, I was, say, I was saying neon cast the shape of a pop tart. I don't think it. I don't think you can reproduce that. You could. You just put it in the toaster or go to the grocery store. Not with that attitude. And if I'm See? not mistaken, doesn't Lynch already asexually reproduce using his semblance? 
That, does, that doesn't I'm count. I'm pretty sure, though, he actually was born from human reproduction and not yeah, asexual I, reproduction. I, yeah, oh, dear pretty God. Pretty <laughs> what is this conversation? I have no idea where this is going, but it's weird. But, how is it different from, you know, I can't answer it, because how different is that from any other other conversations? <laughs> I'm sick and but curious. Oh, dear God. <laughs> Moving on! Uh, plus 10 points for the reference. I mean, I'm just gonna make one point on how people in that list are asexually uh, reproductive. You look at uh, Jocks and Lee. They are never ever going to have a girl in their lives, so they have to se asexually reproduce to keep their shitty blood. You know, you know, I mean, they bring, you bring that up, then I want to bring this up. You bring up, you bring him up, and I'm gonna say the same thing I said in the chat. Whitley's about the same, about, uh, Whitley is about as evil as the, the, uh, as the company intern. Okay, he, he, like, are you trying like, to he's defend he's about, he's a, Whitley right now? No, I'm just saying in common sense, Whitley's about as evil as the company intern. I think Whitley, I'm the only so, one who's so, he's the company. I get more of a Kyra than him. Like, every time he smiles, he's the, the, the company. I get the company oh, sucker. Let's put it this way. So what you're saying is that he's the margarine of evil, the diet <laughs> coke of evil. Yeah, just pretty much. With calorie, not evil enough. Yeah, the pretty much. Is coming I, the right sad, now. the sad Wait, thing is, is that I, I, I the only, uh, the only downside, the only the downside, the diet coke is, of evil. The only downside to Whitley is that his head's so far on the ground, China wants to reproduce it. <laughs> I'm just gonna it say, took me a couple seconds, but I got it. it, it <laughs> you guys have all been getting it wrong. FYI. This is from the group of people who winced at that fan art. Of yeah. voice getting back at him. I did hey. not. Hey, I'm the one who. Yeah. I'm just talking. At, I'm just talking from common sense. Is that it's yes, literally he's a, just... yes, he's a piece of crap, but there's a reason for it. I mean, we're not yeah. saying that there's a reason Can for I it. Actually... We're just still saying he's a little asshole. Oh, we should, oh, he totally is. I'm just saying. I'm just saying he's just a company suck up. He's not gonna do anything remotely even close to being bad. Bad. All right. All right. That's, that's that's being what said, may I? Act yeah, since we're moving the conversation to Whitley for whatever reason, may I just say I'm the only one who could actually properly defend and explain his actions ever I since that episode? I just did. Well, <laughs> well, you mentioned nothing about him being a little daddy's boy, so... Yeah, no, that's, that's, pretty much, he's what he that's pretty much what he does. He's a company, yeah, he's a company psycho. He just does what daddy well, wants. I'm, I'm just imagining, like, like he hasn't too, done right? anything what? wrong. Like, his motivation so far was pretty much, okay, Either Weiss obeys what Dad does, and then everything Dad gets done, and I'll be happy with that. Either that, or Weiss does what she wants, then then Dad will just put me in charge of her job, and then I can just do what Dad wants. I'm okay with either. All right. Yeah, that, that's pretty much the, that's pretty much the, the exact definition of a company suck up. <laughs> that's why I made like the I comparison. Said, this is Daddy. He, he's the Daddy. Uh... He's Daddy. Oh dear God. Boy. He's daddy's little boy. Let's oh no! I just inspired. He's the youngest sibling no. who's too nice just, and vulnerable to he what their father tells. He doesn't know it. He's, 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 the, to what he's their the youngest kid them, that so. doesn't. He's the one kid that doesn't know any better. He doesn't know what's good and evil, so he just goes Certainly whatever. He, he just does whatever daddy says. The thing is, though, is that the entirety of of his character so far has been, or rather, just the the, the facial expressions that that Rooster Teeth animator on him. You can tell that he's very aware of what he's doing, especially given the fact that that he he mentioned. Uh, all right, I'm gonna say this last thing. Then we actually have to get back on the world of remnant. Um, yeah. The the entirety of, of of his I don't want to say persona, but the entirety of the way that he's been presenting himself, as well as how he how he views the others, is your fighting is completely barbaric. Like this, we can do this strictly from a I guess a political standpoint, or we can do this from a sort of hey man, like we're too good for that sort of thing. So That's, yeah. Whitley, I was gonna say, oh god. No, no, no like, I didn't. Ha I didn't have anything to add. Just tactics going. to the Schneed Dust Company, and then he realizes, oh no. Yeah, oh wait, that that things I've been doing are bad. What have I been doing? <laughs> Maybe I'm. An not just, not just that. It's just that everything, all their defenses and everything would be shut down, and they'd be overrun in an instant. <laughs> oh crap. <laughs> anyway, back into the world of remnant. So one thing that I thought was extremely interesting was the uh, was the fact that eventually, like the the original hyper neutrality of vacuo and then Is that literally how just pronounced? yes i think it's i think it's vacuo uh, i thought Va i thought it's pronounced it like vacuo or something like i can never remember. i think it i could never either. remember well it's vacuo it, it's, it's a vacuum oh 
But the biggest thing it's about just it, a black hole. <laughs> the the biggest thing about it that I thought was extremely interesting was the fact that it's like, hey man, I want to stay neutral, and then they look through like it's that whole mentality of the enemy of my enemy is my friend. Yeah. So that was something that was extremely, I guess, interesting to me. Because originally, it's literally, Vancouver, America and World War Two, and Britain falls there next. Yeah. That's actually a pretty good comparison. And do we have any thoughts on uh, kind of how how Vacuo got involved? Or whether it was a good uh, idea? They or just went in and said everything. Basically, they were kind of... <laughs> they were basically kind of neutral about it, and then uh, Mantle and Mistrels went, hey, uh, just please don't get involved, and then it got to the point where it's like, hey, you're going to help us, right? With, like, knives to their backs, and then Vacuo responded with... <sighs> Gonna pick up Boy, my sword like a bat here, tap it in my left hand deeply. like this. Boy, Back your fucking embassies up to the edge of the of our continent. Oh, what's that? You're fighting Vale right now. Hey, Vale, guess who you have as a buddy? I think I kind of laughed at uh, at Crow's uh, Crow's uh, commentary on that one. <laughs> they drove them away. I like their style. <laughs> For as the buildings are on fire. On <laughs> fire! This! Oh, wait, never mind. I was gonna make a song reference, but I got something for you. Quick question. How long ago was the Great War? 80, 80 years, right? Was the Great War? I was it 80 or 100? I, I have no idea. I, I, I remember 80 being a distinct number from something. Like, I never brought the look it. It was 80 years ago, but it started 10 years before then. And for a hundred years before that, was building up to it. Okay, are we making comparisons to World War One, World War Two, or the Hundred Year War? Or did Monty just decide get all of them at once? Probably all of them at once. Probably all at once. That's terrifying. Because <laughs> why the hell not? The compare the comparison and the contrast is extremely interesting to me. It's it's the I don't know. I think it's extremely interesting that 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 the, the way that it's been progressing is just you can consistently draw parallels between what's going on in our world and what's going on in, in Ruby. And uh, obviously when, when Merc first had said it's, it was pretty much like World War II, I was like, hmm, that's a good point. Merc's still waiting for that big sale. I think it was more like World War One, to be perfectly honest. Pray tell. Well, you don't have, well, you don't have an assassination. Yeah, but you had um, a fight that um, blew up out of, and um, went out of control and started causing um, a wider scale conflict and then a um, neutral nation getting dragged into it because they were being forced to choose sides. Vacuo was the United States in that scenario. Hey, has I don't, I don't know if said, I can go into detail about I'd more argue historical about that. Like, accuracies, but I'll just roll with it for now. Yeah, it's hard to argue with that from my, from my end. So, I guess the, the major... I'm a history major. I, the, I last, to, like, the last I major point that I'll, I'll ask you guys about. That bad <sighs> king, though. Uh, any any everything. thoughts? Any thoughts on the quote-unquote warrior king? <laughs> the king uh, of the everything. Ospen before Ospen, maybe. I thought it was extremely interesting that they had the same color template and the fact that he had the king. I don't want to say I'm making any, or I'm not making any judgments, but it okay. Seems show kind of hands, who agrees? Show of hands, who thinks that the sword in chief is Ospen's king? I. Uh, wait, wait, hold on a second. You, sure. you said I hi have... after you called for everybody to raise hands. I was like, dude, we're in a Skype call. We can't raise our hands. That's what the I is for. Well, if we're going to go with this logic, then all in favor of thinking that this Jean sword is actually the Warrior King sword. Oh, that, nope. that's an explain interesting the shield. Nope. Would you right, say no? no? I, was saying, no. I was saying explain the shield then. No, no, Kajal, did you say no? I'm saying no. All right, I right. have explain a yourself. much hold on. more interesting. <laughs> Theory. Oh, hold, shoot. On, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. If we're go if I'm to play off of that theory for a minute, that means John hasn't unsheathed his sword at all, like the main sword a little bit is <laughs> just the actual C. 
<laughs> like, would it that be? Would it that be how you designed to keep a blade that powerful hidden away, put it inside another sword, and pretend that's the whole sword? And put you know that. that you sheath? know that. You know that would be silly, but yet in character of John anyway. Uh, Kudzu, you're saying about the theory? Yes, I believe that the um, Warrior King actually had the four relics, and that the sword is a relic. The um, Relic of Destruction. The Crown is the Relic of Knowledge. The Cane, or the Scepter, would be the Relic of... Um... Knowledge? Or, um, I would say that would be Power. Was it, was it, it was the, the, the four relics were Creation, Destruction, Free Will, and... and or, I'm sorry, Choice and Knowledge? Yeah, the, the I said the crown was knowledge, right? Yeah, you said crown was knowledge. So the so um, destruction. The, the um, cane would pr probably be creation, and to be perfectly honest, I'm not sure what free will would be. But what if it was the ruby? It was the silver eyes. What if silver eyes? Uh, that's not really a relic. I've that heard. would be that would mean ruby's eyes are fake, and I highly doubt that's a thing. Well, I mean, it, well, it's it possible mean... that that it was something. I mean, because obviously everybody has the innate, I guess the the everybody has free will, especially in Remnant, and that's something that I obviously when Crow had mentioned that each one of them is a literal identifiable object or something like that you could easily directly see and like all that other stuff. That thought did come to mind, Kajal. I. I don't know how much or how much faith I can put in it, only because of the fact of if it was something that was, like I, I guess the. Uh, oh, there sorry, is. I'm, I'm trying to. I'm trying to think of my words, but go ahead. There is one other aspect about this because when you see the four nations come together, they use the same symbol as used when um, Crow was talking about the um, creation of, man of humanity. That was the merger of the destruction and creation magics of the two brothers. Same exact um, graphic was used, and there was a global-wide change in humanity at that point. And that really suggests the relics were used to change things. On that day was when the brothers Grimm wrote down their tales. <laughs> I mean, it makes. I mean, with that said, it does make sense. At the same time, I can't see a pair of eyes being a relic. I'm just. I'm sorry. I well, mean, it's not necessarily uh, just one, because don't forget I, that the silver eyes is something that's specifically limited to Ruby. Yeah, I was getting ready. I was getting ready to say. I'm pretty sure that's limited to that. Fa I'm pretty sure it's limited to that family line of who actually uh, actually gets that thing. That would be an overpowered uh, relic if it was just a gene. Yeah, trait. I. Yeah, I agree. That'd be, but at that'd... the same time, also very fragile because, let's face it, eyeballs out in the open, eh, not so great. Yeah, that, yeah, that, I, don't happen th yeah I, really I really doubt that. I really doubt that would be. A uh, please don't reference that show here. What that said, with that, I would say, mm. the, with that, so I would think it had to be something else entirely. It is very likely something else entirely, but it was the only. Uh, it's like I was looking for a fourth relic and I could not find anything. Also, no, when you said when you said the cane just, being created, I literally it might just also imagine mean... your profile picture, Cudgel. Literally, just yeah, might... there's like some guy walking around with the cane, like oh, da, 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 da. I'm gonna touch this, and all of a sudden there's just a tree grow there. Like let me just touch this. Like... Huh. Now there's water. <laughs> right now, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> right now, I feel, I feel like the reasoning in our theories is like trying to progress in a Phoenix Wright game. All right, which piece of evidence could fit here? This? Nope. This? Nope. This? <laughs> nope. <laughs> No, well, we lost the case. Gotta restart. <laughs> reload safe. <laughs> Fights the reload, dust. Reload Ruby. Well, I'm, I freely admit that the Silver Eyes is very likely not one of the four relics. But it was the, you know, trying to figure out what the fourth relic could have been, and it's like, well, maybe Silver Eyes. Yeah, it's, 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 I it's, doubt. It's, it's, I, it's that seems very flim. That seems very. Yeah. yeah. You, to me, that, that seems very flimsy. Uses relics then into possible. other people is the issue. To me, to me, that seems very flimsy. Yes, it is. It's too I hard agree with that. And I know I, this I is a it's... theory video, but... This yeah. is a theory video? Oh, really? I didn't know that. I mean, the whole... Well, I thought this I was also... a podcast. I've never been <laughs> theories at all. I, I also think that the uh, relics, you're going to find the crown, 
is probably being kept at Mistral, and the um, sword is kept in Atlas. Actually, do you want to hear? I would think if you're going to say that the crown be Atlas. If you're going That's to say the crown is, logo is, if you're going to say that the crown is a relic, I'll give you a hint right now. John's shield. There's yeah, my I theory. Getting, on that. I was getting ready to bring that. There's up. my okay. theory to your theory. I was going to bring that up too. I think one what thing the was was it Pira? Did Pira have? Did it? Did they ever? Re or reveal any information about where Pira's kind of crown came from? No, they, they just... I, no, they never really said anything. They just kind of, oh, it's just for design. Hmm. I think it'd be interesting. They never, really, they, never really, they never really described anything about Pira's backstory, period. She just, we she want more Pira backstory. Stay. She was just... Ki for, pretty much all three for pretty much all three oh, volumes, she was God, just Rick. there. I am absolutely baffled. So was the art. Huh? That so was the R and N and Junior. What'd you say, uh, Kajo? You have completely baffled me. I am proud. Are you, who is that in response to? About Pyrrha's crown being one of the relics, and this relic, um, John is now carrying around a relic. Yeah, we, we, we well, would have that was no me idea. Brought it up, so. Yeah, I mean, we would it's, have, it's, and we would have no idea. I guess it's just a theory. Hmm. Oh, of a theory. theory. <laughs> Thankfully, it's Thanks not Thanks for game. watching. Thankfully, Podcast over. <laughs> no. You were saying? I was saying, no, don't, no, I was saying, no, don't do it. I'm like not that. you. I'm thinking, was it, was it, Kajal, were you, are we trying to say something? No. Was anybody trying to say something? Okay, anyway, in that case, moving on. So, now that we covered the World of Remnant, we're going to be moving on to the series. I'm going to say this right now. You're going to die. I don't think I'm going to live much longer. People kept making jokes that it was like, well, I mean, to be fair, it's like, don't forget that uh, it was just, it was by the looks of it, it was just a shoulder wound. On the other hand, as we've confirmed, Miles and Carrie don't know jack about, about anatomy. So, <laughs> for all we know, it could just be like, oh, I got stabbed in the shoulder. Well, I'm dead. You know, if Goku can survive with a hole in his chest, I'm pretty sure you're fine. Oh, dear God. <laughs> Just saying. All the blood is inside. That's where it's supposed to be. Yeah, if at, at worst, you're pro it's like getting stabbed by a thumbnail. Or a thumbtack or something. I mean, by uh, the looks of it, it didn't seem... It this didn't seem like... thumbnail's gonna kill you. I'm pretty... That's, that's, there's no way... Yeah, I'm not that's, that's, a, that's like a really... Sun's death is gonna be forced if they do it. If that not, would be very forced, yes. It won't have the same impact. Yeah, that would that would come off very, very extremely forced. I want Sun to be someone who, is as strong and going and actually outgoing as Admit Sun here, because and the so, Sun again, in show, the Sun in show is really just kind of a wimp who's like, yeah, I'll go with you. Oh no, things are hard. Uh, uh excuse you, excuse <laughs> you. You went out of way go. for Blake in Volume 1. Here we go. I no, would no. have his own character arc without Blake. He no, I agree with that. I definitely agree with that. He needs to have his own his own substantial character development where it's not just specifically, okay, I'm going to... I'm, uh, I guess the best way to describe it is that, is, that I, is that I would absolutely love if Sun went off on his own adventure and was uh, and had more, more character or more character development without Blake. I will admit that. That being said, I'm gonna say this offhand. Boy, I still, I still am totally down for Black Sun. But anyway, you know, for you know, for you know, what's funny? You say that you want Sun to go on his own adventure. And I just imagine it being like a Saturday morning cartoon every single time. Make it like the Chibis. Like yeah, no, yeah, just it, like it's not, even, it's not even, like not even a Chibi. It's just it's just Sun doing stuff. It's just Saturday morning cartoon. <laughs> just him like pouring a bowl of cereal. Adventures yeah. Sun. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey, is there a robot tail. mech fight going on outside? Uh, but I guess I would much rather have ramen because that robot's a little tough. I don't know. Okay. All right. Now, now, fair, now you, you got me back up again. I have nunchucks. Like I have nunchucks. What am I gonna do against a robot? You fired me up he got again. Blasted away from the environment. How could he come back? I'm I more have... upset at the fact that. Okay. So let me get this straight. Let me get this straight. 
You are going to sit here and tell me that Sun is the type of uh, Sun is the type of character who says, "Oh no, it's too hard." Uh, no, he, no. he tries to be outgoing. He tries to get in there, but the moment things get a little taxing, he feels like giving up, and I don't like that. Okay, c cite your sources. It's cite your sources. All right, uh, the, so the fight in Volume 2 with the robot where he got flown off and decided that he and Neptune should just eat ramen and like, eh, I think they'll be he fine. Didn't know eh. Stupid. About it. It kept he got knocked off a freeway. Away from him. How can he, he got knocked off a freeway floating you with cars. He's not gonna get. He's not gonna catch up to that anytime soon. The robot stopped in like 10 seconds later. He still he got thrown like off of a highway. <laughs> yeah, like he knew. Again, like he, he has aura. Yeah. And then, if you notice right, that the entirety of the, of the of the highway was was ridiculously high up there, you're telling me right now that that if I were to throw oh, that if I were to throw you off of a highway, that you would totally be like, oh, crap! I better get back there. Hey, the rest of Team Ruby were determined. That's because yeah, they, they were literally really they didn't get thrown off the highway. Yeah, they were still on the highway. They were still on the highway. Yeah, the so they didn't got, got catapulted off. off. Okay. Okay. So you have any thoughts on this? Another point, because this is obviously being contested. Oh boy. Oh, definitely. Here we go. Case go two for this. That Sun and Neptune did actually during the Grim Invasion at the end of Volume <laughs> Two. Uh, I'm I sorry. What? Completely. At, at the end of Volume Two. Okay. You know two. what? For sake, for sake, for sake of keeping the keeping this podcast short, so that way the editing isn't absolute hell, we're gonna discuss this outside. Of this podcast after we're done, but oh, anyway, oh, oh, some words. I, am so I have I have some com completely <laughs> substantial words. Uh, hang on a second. Prepare to burn. Dog's barking. Anyway, um, right. So, uh, brief. So, moving on from that topic before I literally have to come through this computer screen and beat the crap out of blush. Um, <laughs> thoughts uh, on uh, thoughts on Ilya. I think that it's extremely interesting that, that Adam we see Adam yet another one. Adam Ilya Love Triangle gone wrong. I'm yep. sticking with it. I don't give a... I'm just going to keep saying it. Mm. He's right. He's right, you know. Right, I am. I think, I think it'd be... It's kind of interesting to have yet another character who has some sort of backstory to Blake. And I'm very curious to know if Ilya knows something about Blake's time in the White Fang that we don't. And I hope that is the case. I think, I think they were best friends, but kind of mutually disagreed with, uh, but uh, politely disagreed with each other's uh, reasonings on how the White Fang should go. So they probably separated for that, but on good terms. And that's why she's like, I think bad terms. You should not have come back. Yeah. I, I, I'm just, I feel I'm, it's I'm, more bad terms than anything. The, the way uh, she, but... she seemed almost. I don't. I don't want to say unhappy to see her, but she was definitely, definitely Envious. up there. Yeah. She didn't want to see Blake get back involved because it seemed she knew Blake uh, more than some other people did. I think it's too early to for me to actually give an opinion right now. So. That's fair. Also, it, it's uh, well, too I think, early I think for us to give our opinions, and yet we make theories every week. I think it was pretty yeah, interesting. I'm not the one who makes have... theories. That's why. I think it was pretty interesting that uh, the get episode reviews. Of the the, the pre-consistent episode reviews, it was I can't remember who does it. Was it? It's not Mammoth, is it? The the ones that Port po always posts the episode reviews. Anybody? Anybody know who? That oh, was? I think that, I think uh, that, that's a that's the, a Reddit thing. Oh, but the I I started laughing when uh, when Elia came up specifically just because it was Karma 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 Camellia. <laughs> <laughs> I was I like, like yes, they, I, like, I like it. I like, I like when they describe Ospin and it's just and it's just like and it's just that one pic one one spot spot picture of a ghost on a piece of paper. <laughs> Pretty much. The no, spot, the spot no, picture. No. If we're talking about made up if we're talking about replacing character portraits, the one they have of Cinder with just a sweating peel with the nervous face. Yeah. That no, my, was my, fa my favorite one was during Volume Three where they replaced Adam with Darth Vader. Yeah. <laughs> Those were the obvious ones though. <laughs> ten out of ten. So getting, getting back out of the topic, so what do we Wait, think sorry. of Ilya's, uh, I'm sorry, beyond just obviously what we talked about specifically, but do we think that we're going to get more of a, I guess not necessarily backstory, but actually, you know what, yeah, literally just another more backstory. Do we think that we're going to get yes. a little bit more backstory into Blake's time in the White Fang? 
More so than any backstory we've gotten on Red and Nora, yes. That would probably be, I feel I feel like that would probably be an episode by itself. Merc. If they did that. Merc. Not this season. Well, either that or something like a short. Is Merc getting like a bowl of cereal or something? That was my phone falling, sorry. <laughs> Wait, he says as he picks up he says as he picks up his boot. <laughs> he eats cereal what? out of his boot. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I uh, only have a minute of screen time, but you know, it. Mercury and Emerald are still waiting for that bake sale. They are. They they oh, wish shit. they wish they would join the bake sale. Uh, cut your thoughts. Advertising. No, none. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out of this year to provide laughs for our jokes. I'm not. I'm out of this one. <laughs> So, I guess my biggest thing is, the, the last, I guess, quote-unquote theory uh, was mentioned to, was mentioned to me in, uh, by a friend of mine. Do we think that Team Ruby is going to come back together? Not probably yes. not, probably next volume, I would say. It'd have to be next volume, it seems way too, like... I think it's a little early it's for not that, what they myself. Want. I, would, yeah, I mean, my, they... my idea is that they'll actually start the journey to get back together, but not actually meet up this volume. It'll end up being like, oh, hey, I found you. Hey. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. Just think I about that's it. How, don't know what, I like, think that's how it's going to end up being, because honestly, that would be a little early for something <clears> like that. If they magically knew where everyone was through the, believing in the heart of the glyphs or whatever... Like <laughs> you say that, and I keep thinking about back to Yu-Gi-Oh! Believe in the heart of the cards. Point. <laughs> Dude, that and our phones. Cudgel? They don't have phones because the CCP yeah, no, is still down. Nope, scroll. They won't get to the um, end of Season 6 or at the um, climatic moment of um, Season 6. That's way too long, I think. It's character. Oh, I think it's... Oh, go ahead. It... Go on. Oh, um, I was saying that I think it'd be pretty interesting if we had a sort of... Um... Uh, number one, I think it's uh, the, the in the opening. Obviously, they tease the, they tease the one on one fights, which we've already had one, which was obviously they Tyrion, Tyrion versus one on one fights since volume two, and we still cough, didn't cough, really get any intro, of those. Cough, cough, cough. Wait, cough, yeah, cough. That, I guess the intro always. Really I'm putting it right. I'm one, the, I've been the saying this. Like and Yang and Mercury, those all happened, and Ruby I'm, and Cinder. I'm just saying. I'm just saying that the intro always lies. I've, all, I've been you. saying that for a while. Thank you. Surprise me if Yang does not end up fighting those two white fang douchebags. I think those ju two just appeared there because Adam had appeared right before then, and that because was it, it. they just pre they just they brought him up because it looked pretty. I mean, you could also, if you wanted to, you could also quantify the fact that it's it's it was a representation of the white fang, which Yang did fight the white fang. I and had, literally, they just in, in a giant singular individual, and you can't. And I'm sorry, but you cannot tell me that she did not when she literally lost her arm because of it. I'm not mm. saying anything. Well, oh no, no, that wasn't you, Merc. I want to see this happen with these well, two. Well, their arms, their arms back, so that's a plus. Go, Rosencrantz and Goldenstern ripoffs. <laughs> if Yang or Blake fight Adam again, it's probably going to be side by side. That'd be interesting. So let's think about. I'm just gonna sit in terms of something everyone can understand. It was basically the Anakin and Obi Wan versus Dooku fight from Attack of the Clones. <laughs> That's the best way. To it. Oh, honestly. You can't win this, Zhang. I've got the high ground. Oh dear God. Do it. Do it. Do it. <laughs> Actually, that reminds me. There's, there's like, a video you that I saw. Just like an emperor throw, so like, do it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wait, wait, is that the video? Literally just every lightsaber sound is just replaced with with uh, the Emperor saying, do it. It's like, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. Nah, I, have to, nah, I have to post it like that nah, video. Nah, do it. Nah, nah. I don't know. Anyway. Um, so, I guess... Oh, crap, we're going on 45 minutes. Nice. Yeah. I did, can, I say, can I say something before we, hang, before, we, before we move on? Absolutely not. Because I want... Oh. <laughs> God. Um, I want I wanted to bring up my own personal topic if that's okay. Uh, absolutely not. Yeah, it's something that's been bugging me for a long time now. Nope. You're done. Well, I, I know it's gonna sound like one of the. It's gonna sound like a little. It's one. Of, I know it's a controversial opinion, but I just want to. just want to bring done. this up. No. No. <laughs> um. 
I'm gonna be honest. I did not like the latter half of Volume Three at all. And it's not even because of all the oh, it's so grim and depression and all that. No, it just feels so rushed. You know, if that makes sense. Right. It feels it, to me. It feels very. It feels. Very, it just feels rushed to me. Like, it feels like they're. Tr it, it. I find it so hard to follow the latter half of that entire thing. It, it, it is so hard for me. To, it is really hard. And it fell really hard. Well, it, it, and because of that, it it got really, really hard for me to follow it. That's my biggest problem is that it focused, I feel like it focused too much on different things and it, I, I just couldn't keep up because it's so many, so many things were happening at once and it was hard to follow everything. That's how I felt about the first two and a half volumes and then that thing happened and then I started to focus and like okay things are coming together well, even when I did well even when I did that it still felt rushed to me that's what that's the problem eh, I have to disagree that's just that's just that's just me that's just my own personal opinion you're you're free to disagree I'm just saying that's that's how I see it free to disagree Mark, Kajal, think thoughts? Well, well, what? it means that volume four has been at a more pace well of... I can I can actually keep up with volume four that's not my point no, what I'm saying is that if the first couple of volumes were rushed, or um, if volume three was rushed, rather. Well, but I mean, I'm, like, I'm specifically talking about the latter half of volume three, which felt rushed. So you felt, so you felt as though uh, the other volumes were at a fine pace. Uh, in some in some places, it's for most part, yes. For most, like I said, for a most part, for like a, a few key things, obviously, but for the most part, it felt pretty consistent. I just feel like the latter half of volume three kind of felt rushed because of the. Because the unfortunate passing. That's what I'm getting at. Kaji, you were saying? No. Uh, Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Name, but I wasn't sure. Does that make sense? Kind of. Mm -mm. Makes sense. I didn't feel like it was uh, rushed. Like the ending well, half to volume two, three, my bad. It didn't, in my opinion, everything was like the tempo of what everything used to be was increased. Not. Well, it's not, and, and I, that's and I have no problem. Again, I have no problem. Again, I have no problem with that. It just, it felt like too much at once to throw at people. That's what I'm the getting at. Yeah, but you know? think about it. You have a mass panic and I mean, I get what they're. I get what they're getting. Get, get, I know what they're getting. Rushed. I know what they're getting at, but it just felt like things were, were going by way too fast for people to actually catch up to. That's what I'm getting at. It's like things are getting a little harder to follow. Think. And I followed it I, easier than ever before. No, I did. I did not. My biggest but thing is that any time I got confused, myself. or like any time something seemed kind of off, I would just go back and rewatch the episode. So I guess I can understand where you're coming from. I guess my biggest thing would be if you feel like it's going a little bit faster, or rather if you feel like it's almost. I, I guess yeah, be in, in your words, being rushed. Then the easiest thing you could do would be like, all right, well. Like so, sometimes I've done. I admit I've done this before. I literally go through and I'm like, I make like this nice little document, and I'm like, all right, so what have what is what's happened so far? Like this is what's going on here. Okay, so this is going here. Uh, you know, I I literally write out a full list of like, okay, so this is what I think is what's been going on, and this is what I think is going to happen. So obviously you can kind of quote unquote keep pace with it. Yeah, yeah, and and again, like I said, Volume Four, I feel was has been has been very e much much easier for me to follow i'm just saying that that specific point was really hard to keep up with because like there's like a billion things happening at once and i could not figure out what what goes to what because they felt so mashed together sometimes but again they, but again that was just me that's fair. uh so we're, we're we're getting at about the 50 minute mark here so yeah. uh closing thoughts guys bush uh Everyone at home, pray for me. <laughs> Mark? I regret everything in my life. Still? Oh, yeah! Jesus. <laughs> yes! Oh, my God. I still want that. Gudgel, <laughs> last thoughts? Well, I'm starting to think that Crow might die. <laughs> no! That, no! That, that would be ter- that, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna get this out there. That would be terrible storytelling. I that don't know, because he's been, he has been, so Ruby, actually, Ruby herself actually sent me a list of all the tropes that Ruby has been following, and one of the most important ones that's, that's more prevalent now is the consistent thoughts of 
uh, Crow being the the mentor, the the mentor that passes away. Yeah, but that's I'm, I'm way, sorry to I say, but like I, I feel like too, I feel yeah, like he's right going now, to I die. I feel like that's way oh, I feel like that's way way too soon because we still know so little about that about that family aspect. We still know so little. But there's still if one other person who's prevalent in the story involving that, who can still tell the information. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the problem is when. We don't That's know. My issue. That's fair. I just feel like that'd be that'd be pretty bad storytelling. But that's just me. Again. If I can just barge in here for a second, I'd just like to say, when Ty said I would die of liver poisoning one day, this isn't exactly what I thought he meant. <laughs> oh God. Raw Roman last thoughts. <laughs> Uh, all right, cool. Anyway, <laughs> some people just want to watch the world burn, and that's just me right now. <laughs> that's fair. Well, all right, guys, this has been the podcast. Oh, yeah. This has been the podcast for the world of Remnant involving the Great War. I hope you guys enjoyed it with all these theories, and we still want that fan art of what was it? The yeah. the grim Kool Aid Man. Grim Kool Aid Man. I'm, I'm just I'm saying it now. It's going to be extremely racist, but probably yeah. It's just, what do you think? It's a Kool Aid Man, and you're asking for a grim. It doesn't even have to be the Kool Aid Man. Just a giant grim being like the Kool Aid Man. Yeah, just just literally, yeah, just a giant grim breaking through breaking through a window. Uh, yeah, so we still have that fan okay. art. If you guys do, or if you guys do send it, make sure you send it to our pages inbox. If you guys are randomly fi- are finding this, there will be a link down in the description, specifically to our fa- or for our Facebook page. We are the Ruby Nation. We are a fan ba- our fan run page uh, for the obviously for the anime Ruby. I'd be very confused if you didn't know what that was. If you're watching this. But this uh, isn't about Naruto. This Fuck. is about Naruto. Ah! We have a whole podcast dedicated this is to Naruto. a Dragon Ball Super. Oh man! This is this is actually My Little Pony. Um. Anyway. Oh, oh no. Friendship Run. is magic, guys. Anyway. Run. So, <laughs> if you guys want to, uh, make sure you drop that page. Drop that page a like. Also, make sure you're subscribed to our YouTube channel. There's a lot of stuff that comes out. His Wilt is just a fantastic editor. He always does really solid work. And not only that, if you guys actually want to, a lot of the admin stream, uh, if you want to figure out our stream times, you can also go to the page. It's going to be displayed on there. Uh, this is the... What is this? I think this is like our... I want to say like 15th podcast. We're getting up there. But anyway. I don't think we have 15. I thought we did. Huh, maybe I'm just dumb then. Anyway, well, uh, no this shit. has been uh, Admin Sun. That means you're supposed to go uh, one at a time and say your names. Oh, darn it. Who okay. goes first? Okay, blush, blush go. <laughs> uh, this, 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 this admin blush, this, stay classy. This, ad, this admin, or, no, stay this neutral. GB admin because is Because being chaotic like best. me will just get you. Oh, dear God, one at a time. I'm trying to do the outro, damn it. Yeah, that, I thought this that was what we were trying to do. This is why you announce the names. Okay, go. <laughs> this, this is admin. This is melodic. <laughs> That's my line. That was forced. Alright, anyway. It sounded, it sounded, sounded kind of meh. I will smack you with my other cane. Okay, bye. You don't have another cane, you're dead.